My Sienna's been the perfect adventure van with kitchen, couch, and bed, but I like to do all kinds of stuff and basically needed my van to be a transformer. And now it can be a flat bottom cargo van for hauling around dogs or lumber or whatever else. Then I wanted an easy switch to passenger mode so that I could carpool around to go on some sweet adventures with my friends. So stick around and I'll break down every aspect of this build in detail so that you can incorporate some of these elements or all of them into your own minivan build. Let's roll. I've watched countless minivan builds and tried to take the best elements from each of them. So let's start out with a tour and check out the junk in my trunk. Mm. First in our kitchen here, I've got a slide out stove top and sink supported by an adjustable hiking pole. The handle of the pole sits in the grab handle cut out of the shelf, and while it holds the weight without it, it really prevents the wood from sagging in the middle and is surprisingly sturdy. Then to keep our stove top in place, we cut out these four holes to fit where the little rubber feet go so that it won't shift at all while driving. Foot fetish anyone? And next to our stove top, we have the cutting board that you can actually pop down into a full size sink with running water. For just like 15 bucks, this is probably my favorite product in this build for how cheap it is and the value it'll add to your camper setup. Make sure you check out the description. I'll add a link to this and all my favorite products from the build so you can check them out for yourself. Then for around 15 bucks as well, I got this electric chargeable faucet that I epoxied some magnets to the bottom of the base that was included. As you can hear, it's relatively quiet, but it's important to test out the positioning before you go ahead and secure it down. Then I ran the tubing included down to one of those soft five gallon water jugs at the bottom. And as an added bonus, it even doubles as a bidet in a pinch. And to lock it all in place, I screwed a hockey lace onto a bolt and we're gold. Next, we got our massive pantry below. The bottom shelf slides out, giving you access to these two massive storage containers. We'll use the kitchen facing side of the containers to store our dry foods, kitchen supplies, and dog food. And the other side we'll show you later and you're still able to access these just fine even with the grill fully pulled out and in use. Then when you push that same shelf backwards, it'll expose what I like to call the poop deck in the bottom of the trunk. Down there we store our water like I mentioned, some camp chairs, the propane for the grill, and our battery with a nice large fold out table. And for electricity, we got this Goal Zero Yeti 1000 that's been more than enough to meet our electrical needs. Then I got it hooked up right to the van to recharge while we're driving. Then we installed this LED strip light that looks sweet. And it was super easy. It just has some 3M adhesive on the backside. And then it has a good range to be able to dim or brighten it to set the mood. We decided to just stick with the cooler we already had, but bought some of these straps to help lock it down in place. And lastly, we picked up this small plastic organizer to hold our cooking and cleaning supplies. All in all, this kitchen's had everything we need. Next, I'll take you to our luxurious bedroom where the magic happens. Get it out! Yeah, get your mind out of the gutter. I was choking. I'll start it in the classic couch mode, which is a must. And again, don't worry, I'll break all of this down for you in detail later in the video, as well as how it's gonna convert into a cargo and a passenger van from all of this. And now under the couch, we got the other side of those same big bins from the kitchen, but here we can put all of our clothes and things that we wanna access in the main cabin. Now to convert it from this into a bed, we just slide out this center support that is on some aluminum rails and then can lift up the platform 
slide it down and pop out our locking legs. In between all of those supports in the center and on the outside there, this bed is incredibly strong, especially because most of your weight is over the frame up top. Then we just command stripped an extension cord from the battery for our power. Next, we got two big dogs that we don't want both sleeping in the bed with us. So I made this platform that's collapsible that you can actually watch in detail how it was built in another one of my videos. But we love our pups and we'll always be taking them with us camping. So it was important to get an additional space for at least big boy Mikey here to curl up and sleep on. Or maybe just me if I'm, uh, you know, out in the doghouse. <laughs> Finally, we can get into what makes this design more flexible than a Chinese gymnast, and that's its ability to convert to a cargo van. So after pushing the bottom panel along the track all the way to the back, I can slide out the kitchen shelf and slide that down into place. Then I can just fill in the uh, plug for the sink spot and we're good to go. Now that can be used as a sort of hatch to access the low- Yo, Fuck. what the hell is yeah. that? Yo, what did I tell you about hiding evidence in my van? Oh, was that a bladed frisbee? Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, that was that was pretty sweet, not gonna lie. <sighs> but, you know. Anyway, so you can access that lower compartment through the hatch, and it's very strong because I cut it essentially at an angle and then filled in the gaps with a bit of hot glue so that it laid flush. Then if you slide the whole thing, fuck it, what, come on. What did you use the chainsaw sloppy, for? Sloppy, sloppy, Jesus. Dude, this is, hey, don't, don't throw that away at our house. This is unacceptable. There's no good reason to have that, my guy. What are you gonna do, you know? Well, if you want, you can check out my channel for some of those more uh, creative builds, but as you can see, I have full access to the deeper part of the trunk and then I can just slide it back in place. And in addition to all that, it is incredibly strong. I mean, I could prop. are you crying? Hey man, look, if you're gonna do these things, the reality is there's gonna be consequences, you know? But anyways, I can throw down an air mattress over this for nice and easy one or two nighter camping trips as well. And so this frame is bolted down directly to the car. So all I have to do to go back to passenger mode is remove those two bolts and then reinstall the back bench seat. Even with my bum ass leg, it takes me maybe 15 minutes in total. And then I leave in the front part of the floor permanently and the legs pop right in right where that floor finishes. And for my floor material, I used what was called this RV coin style flooring. It's extremely durable and has a good bit of grip to it for those doggy paws so they don't slide around. But beware, it does expand with the heat, so when you glue it down, try to be thorough. And when making the floor template, I personally recommend making a sort of template piece like this that is gonna actually match up when you flip it to either side so that you can take some simple measurements and then trace it out and always make sure to double check everything. Also, it's hard to get perfectly flat plywood, so I took some extra measures to try to get the warp out, but it didn't work. And if you have a Toyota Sienna, you know all about these center trolleys that are not easy to remove, no matter what the internet tells you. I wasted hours on this, stripped the bolt, and ended up just building the damn box over it anyway. And I use this sort of plasticky material to trim the edge of the floor. And really you just want something that has high contrast so you can see it. Next, our frame is made up of one two x four, these hard two x twos, and aluminum U-channels. In the back where you can see the piece of plywood where we bolt it to the floor. Now I'm kinda gonna step you through the complete assembly and break down those components. So after first bolting down that frame, I'm gonna slide back in those two shelves, one for the kitchen and the other for the pantry floor. 
and then I got four bolts attached with T-nuts for the inch thick top shelf. And the first time actually I realized my frame was too tall so I had to drop everything down about five inches. Also I tried a half inch hardwood at first up top and it was too weak and the T-nuts didn't stick. So I bought some of Gorilla Glue's two part epoxy and hammered that bad boy back in. And with those fixes, it ended up being stronger than a squirrel's lust for nuts. So then I could simply bolt down that top piece and then slide in our bed frame. Then I used some right angle supports to bolt that bed frame directly into our floor with more T-nuts. And once again, I made some mistakes here and didn't leave enough room for these bins to slide through. So I moved the legs to the outside and replaced the 2x4 across the front with the 2x2. Next, I made this insert out of two aluminum brackets and a couple 2x4s to give some more support down the middle and make it easier to convert from the couch into the bed mode by sliding it along the rail. Once that frame is in place, I'll go ahead and put in the plywood that you'll see is folded up from all of the piano hinges that our bed is going to rest on top of. And I can pull out and unfold the bottom of it to make it easier to kind of manipulate and line up my bolt holes on the back. And check out these nuts! Once again, two more bolts and we're secure. The hinges are gonna alternate, so make sure you double check you're putting them on the right side. Because after working so long on this project, you might get uh, a bit distracted at times. Next, our locking legs actually tuck beside the couch when it's folded up, but those get screwed directly into the plywood along with these two blockers so that it locks up against the frame when it's in couch mode. I also found out the hard way I had to put the center legs on the far most piece of plywood to allow it to easily clear that leg there. It's critical that this leg remains at the joint between the two pieces to maximize strength, however. And yeah, as you can see here, uh, the way I first had it designed, I was getting stuck over and over trying to push it back. And it was because the legs were actually running up against and being blocked by the two couch legs. Just know if you're an amateur like me, you're going to make tons of mistakes at various moments during the build, but persevere, fix them, it'll all be worth it. Hey, I hope you find something in here that's useful and you incorporate into your own build. This was a pretty uh, tame video for me, but if you enjoyed it, I hope you'll subscribe and check out my other videos.